there everybody, Nala15 here. Man, it has been a long time since I've done one of these. Gosh, it's been probably like seven, eight years now on my old channel that I lost the password to, so yeah. Anyway, so I am going to be painting a uh, fan art piece with Nala and Sarabi and Shenzi as the main focus. Um, and I'll just talk along here and you can follow my process. Uh, this is sped up about six times, just so you know. I don't draw this super humanly fast in real life, though I wish that I could. So uh, here you can see I'm just sketching in Sarabi. I had a uh, little stand-in sketch at the beginning, and I um, decided that I didn't like it very much, so I picked up some reference from the movie and decided to just draw her in. As you can see, I'm adding my own expressions and such, but uh, I just wanted to make sure I got the angles of her face right. And then over here, I'm uh, putting in Shenzi. As you can see, I have a screen capture of a hyena that has the expression that I want. I'm gonna make some of my own changes, but uh, he is going to eventually become Shenzi and not this uh, random bonsai clone, uh, which as we all know are basically the hyenas in the movie that are not the main three. And yeah, so uh, drawing snarls from the movie is a little difficult. They don't really draw all the teeth and they kind of mesh together in this one big tooth lump. And it's kind of difficult <laughs> to imagine drawing that at first, but you, you, I kind of get the hang of it after a while. And yeah, also uh, just making sure the jaws are interconnected where they need to go. I've drawn so many unhinged <laughs> looking hyena jaws. It's, it's not even funny. So I, I don't post those. They're just for my practice. So here you can see it looks a lot like bonsai as I'm going through and uh, sketching this hyena, um, but I'm trying to soften some lines here. Uh, Shenzi's got a lip on the uh, uppermost part of her face that hangs down a little bit. Um, she's got like that Whoopi Goldberg face going on uh, as well. I don't know what it is about the hyena that looks like Whoopi Goldberg, it just does. So also making sure that she's got a little bit of um, dark lines around her eyes. I found out later that uh, she doesn't really have that so much, but it kind of helps to give her a little more expression with this angry face. I also wanted to have a little bit of uh, stress on her face too, like she doesn't quite know how to react in this situation that I'm drawing them in. So she's like trying to show uh, Nala who's boss, but she's not sure if this is going to lead to conflict. Uh, just having a little bit of extra emotion there. I hope that comes across. That was my thought process while doing this. And uh, Shinzi also has a pretty pointy ears, I uh, came to find out, so I wanted to make sure I added that in as well. And then here, uh, I'm just drawing some foreground hyenas. I uh, don't think they are supposed to be Bonsai and Ed, but if they're, they're so blurry in the final uh, picture, they could be anybody. Uh, so here, yeah, I, I draw some uh, hair on the top of this hyena's head and I've erased it and like, eh, you know what, it can be Bonsai or Ed, either one. Um, but I'm very proud of how Nala's face turned out. I used some reference of her uh, from a couple of screenshots of uh, her when she fights Simba and when she chases Pumba through the jungle. Uh, she looks very uh, animalistic here and I just love that. But she still looks like Nala, which is weird. Uh, I remember when I was little watching the movie, I didn't think it looked like Nala much at all. But now that I've actually drawn her in this uh, expression, she really does look a lot like Nala. It's really impressive, uh, the, the character design and the expressions that they do. Yeah, and here I'm uh, just doing some final touches on Nala's face, and then I go into inking. Uh, inking is the part of the process that I really uh, dislike the most. Um, I think it's because I have to virtually draw everything again, and I find it kind of boring at first. But once I get into the zone, I'm, I'm in the zone. I can just ink for hours and hours at a time, and I have. Sometimes I just go through and ink a bunch of different pieces at once before I get into coloring. Uh, this piece, for example, I was just going to ink it and move on to doing some commissions, uh, but I ended up having so much fun with it that I decided to stick through and finish it all the way, which is why we have this video right now. I was uh, also kind of doing this to just test out my software and uh, see if this kind of video would be something that you'd like to see from me in the future. So uh, if that's true, let me know. Um, I will probably do some of these <laughs> anyway because they're fun to do and I really like uh, kind of re-watching myself draw this in fast speed and wistfully wishing that I had flash uh, like uh, superhero drawing powers to be able to draw this fast. If I could though, I wonder if the computer would be able to keep up with me or if it would just buffer everything. 
I don't know. Uh, again, uh, drawing snarling teeth in Lion King style is a little tricky. I did take a few liberties here. I had lost my uh, screen cap that I'd used for reference, so I had to kind of play by ear here and decide where the lines for the teeth should go. Um, yeah, so I, I had to just decide where the teeth should be separated and where they should go into those like tooth battery looking things ultimately. Drawing the eyebrows on this was so much fun. I um, was very careful to make sure that everything was smooth, which is why you see me like erasing lines again and again to try to get them just that perfect smoothness. I also have a little trouble uh, drawing fur uh, sticking out. It, it sometimes just looks so fake when I first do it. It's something that I'm still working on. I have to kind of uh, redraw the tips of it so that it doesn't look like it's just a triangle sticking out so it actually looks like a little tuft of fur. And uh, the other thing too is the um, software I used to record this was interfering a little bit <laughs> with the speed so I was kind of drawing ahead of the uh, actual ink as it was loading uh, while everything was working but I, I kind of got used to it as uh, the recording went on. Uh, pupils are also very difficult, and my uh, handy dandy uh, perfect uh, stencil uh, for circles broke while I was doing this, so I couldn't rely on that, so had to just do it by hand. Uh, fortunately, I can draw curves pretty well. It's um, uh, not too difficult, uh, especially in uh, when I don't have to do a full circle. And uh, then Nala's chin. Nala's chin is one of the hardest things to get right. Uh, she has a little bit of like a pointy beard thing and her chin is kind of square. So you have to make sure that it's square and not pointy like a triangle, uh, ultimately. Uh, here I kind of realized as I was doing the shoulder that she doesn't have a chest and uh, you'll see that I add that in a little later. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess uh, sometimes when you do the sketch, it looks okay. And then you go in to do the inks and you're like, hey, wait, it would actually make more sense if this body part was showing after all, instead of uh, pretending that it's just kind of hidden away. So yeah, you'll see me add that in a little later. Um, should, should I do a spoiler alert on that? Oh, probably not. Uh, oh yeah, the ears. I love how the ears turned out in this. They just look so natural and smooth. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, another uh, reason why I wanted to uh, talk here is because of the uh, Lion King live action remake, which I will be clear, I have not seen. I have uh, quite a few mixed feelings about it. I'm, in a way, I'm kind of happy that it exists simply because it's going to introduce, um, or rather <laughs> bring back into the public's eye, The Lion King, which is, I think, one of the best animated movies ever. Uh, if not for um, the inspiring story, then just for the fact that they have such beautiful, grand animation, music, colors, life, it's just a great movie for all ages, seriously. I, I grew up with it. Um, I obviously have uh, never lost my love for it. Otherwise, I really wouldn't be here doing what I do right now. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, just a little side note. I'm going in and cleaning up uh, after I do my fill bucket stuff for the main colors for these characters. It's a little time consuming, but totally worth it. And um, yeah, so back to uh, Lion King uh, remake. I don't think that I'll be seeing it in theaters. Um, I'm, I, I haven't watched a lot of the promo materials for it, um, and those that I have, I watched on mute, uh, simply because, one, I know the story. You can't tell me that there are spoilers in The Lion King remake if I've already seen The Lion King. I don't care. Um, but what I did do is I watched it on mute to see, just, just to take in what the art looks like. And I'm not too impressed with the um, animation itself. Uh, the, the models look amazing. I think that they did a really good job making all the animals look pretty, like they're actual animals. Uh, but the animation itself is really kind of stiff, I guess? They also don't have a lot of weight to them, I noticed. Again, this is promo material. I haven't seen uh, the movie in its entirety, but I don't see how I can expect much else, um, because the uh, 2D movie, by comparison, the characters feel like they have a lot of weight. They feel like they are carrying themselves on the ground, gravity is involved, but these characters in the live action remake, they look like they're kind of floating a bit, um, and that's kind of a thing that CGI characters suffer from in general. 
especially if they're the uh, main focus and you have to spend so much time. And again, I love the fact that they put so much time into creating these realistic looking characters. They, they look beautiful. But they had to spend so much time on that that it's almost like they had to kind of cut the uh, animation budget a bit to make them look more like they're there and more like they're actually carrying weight. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, they just also look very stiff in their expressions. And I, I know everybody has said this to death already, uh, but if you've seen actual animals, their expressions are very subtle. Uh, but there is a lot there, and they might not be communicating what we think they're communicating, because we're, we're people and they're animals, they're going to be saying different things to each other. But you can kind of use those animations as a template and uh, and express them in ways that make sense to us, even though they may not be a literal nature documentary. Um, yeah, I just... I'm having trouble with the animation itself, like the, how they move. That's my main problem with this. I also just get a very big Uncanny Valley feeling from it. I had that same problem with the Jungle Book remake. Uh, the Jungle Book remake, I at least give credit, had a very different story than the original movie. But seriously, that's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot that you can improve upon with the original Jungle Book. It's, it's a good piece of animation history, but it's never been one of my favorites. I always thought it was really long and uh, kind of dull. It had some good songs in it. That was probably the best part. But the main story element was kind of draggy, and I'm happy with what they did in the Jungle Book remake. It, uh, did kind of lull me to sleep after a while. There wasn't a whole lot of excitement in it for me. Uh, they literally did kind of rip off the Lion King uh, stampede scene. Uh, and there's some unintentional comedy. And some comedy that is intentional that really is cringy. Uh, and, and there's just some uh, storytelling elements that are kind of out of place. But that's that's that'd be for another discussion, I think. We're, we're talking about the Lion King here. But my main point is, is that the animals in the Jungle Book had this kind of uncanny valley feeling to me when they were the main focus. When they were in the background, or when Mowgli was kind of the main center, I saw the animals. I'm like, yeah, those animals are actually there. But when the animals were the focus, they looked, again, kind of floaty. Like, they weren't really like on the ground, standing on the ground. Like, they had little hover boots, like, invisible hover boots, like, helping them glide through the landscape. And their their ears weren't really attached to their heads and, and moving with muscles. They were just kind of being pulled by puppet strings. And that's kind of what I see in The Lion King. At least the trailers. Uh, and... I don't know what else I would do to improve that. I'm not an animator. I don't know all the ins and outs of how it works. I've seen a lot of behind the scenes stuff for many, many animated movies over the years, uh, both traditional and CGI. And yeah, it, that's just my main problem with it because The Lion King, the original, is so well animated and so... It has all these subtleties and all of these little things that characters do that make them very, very distinct personalities, and now you have... They, they look real, but they're also not... I don't know, it's just not very satisfying to me. Um, I do plan on watching this at some point, but I don't really have a desire to support the whole remake trend that Disney's doing by going to the theater and having them continue to feed off of our nostalgia and feed off of our desire to just want the same, same, same over and over again. Yeah, but it's Disney. They're they're gonna do what they're gonna do. I I just personally I feel really wrong in supporting something like that. Um, getting back on track a little bit, I'm not so sure with how this is this movie's gonna add anything to the Lion King. I think yeah, if you're expecting to see the Lion King, but what if it was with real animals? I think you're gonna get what you pay for. Um, I watched a really good review by Chris Stuckman. Again, I haven't seen the movie myself, but Chris Stuckman saw an early screening for critics, and he said it was basically the Lion King, but with real animals, and there wasn't a whole lot that was added, uh, but there were some kind of strange elements he said that were not present in the movie, that uh, were present in the original, and he was arguing, and I would have this argument too, like, if you're going to add stuff to this movie and it's a little bit longer than the original Lion King, why are you taking some elements away? And I'm, I'm with him. I don't know why they would do that. And again, 
I can't speak for myself uh, with seeing it. This is just my personal rant on why <laughs> this is even a thing. Uh, yeah, if, if you enjoy the movie, no, I, I don't have any offense against that. It's just not for me, at least not right now. I'm going to stick with The Lion King 2D. I, and I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, we're ruined by childhood because this thing exists now and it's an abomination. No, 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 no. I'm I'm glad that it exists. I get to find some new Lion King merch that's actually officially licensed by Disney instead of that bootleg stuff that's been floating around for years uh, before they released some uh, decent Lion King merchandise back into the wild, as it were. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm having trouble with this. Uh, the other thing too is I don't like how this has kind of torn up the Lion King fandom a bit. Like everybody has to be on one side or the other of everything anymore. And I am just like, can't just have a balance. Like, again, I understand why this exists. I understand why somebody could like this. I'm just, personally, I'm not into it, but I won't fault you for not, for, for liking it or not liking it. I'm good with that, but yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna come back to my drawing here now, I think. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some uh, shading and some shadows here get some lighting in I did do like a blocky background for this uh, before I started doing any of the colors just so I could kind of see what uh, shading I needed uh, what the mood was gonna be like I decided to go for a night scene since lions hunt at night primarily uh, and hyenas are also uh, most active at night if memory serves me right um, and I also thought that this would be, like, a story could be told here, and I love it when I can tell stories through art, uh, which is one reason why I make comics, but if I can tell a story through one piece of art and just have you make up your own story, but just based on the expressions. And you probably noticed that I changed up Sarabi's expression a little bit at uh, a couple of points to make her seeming like she's unsure of the situation, uh, but also maybe she's encouraging uh, Nala to uh, do what she's doing, or maybe she's warning her, who knows? It, it can be up to interpretation at that point, but Nala is <laughs> Nala is uh, really not up to interpretation here. She is very angry uh, about what um, is up to debate. She could be like trying to make sure the hyenas aren't getting the kill for a change. I always imagined uh, the lionesses being not necessarily super underfed, but like they always made sh the hyenas had to eat first because that was Scar's laws or whatever. And the hyenas had to uh, sometimes chase the lionesses away. And if they ever had to, then maybe Scar would get them in trouble. And here, uh, Nala is not a cub anymore. And she's kind of just realized that this is this is my version of the story. And she's saying enough is enough. I I took down this prey and I get to eat it. It's not yours. Go get, get your own food. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't care what, the, uh, what Scar said. And I really wanted to make sure that came across, at least to where Nala is just, like, she's put her paw down. She's like, this is enough. Um, I want to make sure, you can see I'm just, like, touching up little bits and pieces here. So I wanted to add something that I normally never add to, um, my pictures and that is some pretty dramatic lighting uh, I'm trying to get better about that but I also wanted to add a little bit of blood to this one to make it look like a fresh kill and also to give Nala this savage uh, animal expressive um, growl like she's really really trying to intimidate but also she's maybe a little nervous <laughs> i mean her ears are tipped back that's in animal talk that's usually meaning i'm very very aggressive right now or i'm aggressive slash nervous so yeah blood is uh difficult you have to use red of course but you have to use the right kind of red and sometimes you can only really imply that it's red if that makes sense and especially at night blood doesn't look much like blood it looks, looks like this kind of blackish purpley mass and dried blood on fur is very difficult. I've tried to draw it a couple times before without much success. And uh, here I decided to try uh, doing a couple of different layer overlay um, modes to see what would happen. Started off with a really, really bright red and then just kind of uh, contoured it around the teeth by using a eraser on low opacity. 
just uh, went in and uh, tried to add in some detail, really uh, make that stand out. Decided to color it especially on the tips of the teeth because, you know, that's what would be making contact with the fresh meat, right? <laughs> so yeah, a little bit of blood, a little bit of uh, PG going on here. And yeah, The Lion King, the original is rated G. Uh, but there is not very much blood. There is some blood if you look very closely in certain places. Uh, if you know where to look for blood in The Lion King, you can let me know down in the comments so that anybody who has not yet seen the blood in The Lion King, they will now know what to look for when they watch the movie again. Yeah, so I am, I am very happy with how this turned out. Um, I think that I have ranted on quite a lot. But anyway, I hope you uh, guys liked this uh, little chit chat. And if you like uh, this video, I will be more than happy to do another one. And again, I will do another one anyway at some point, just because this is a really nice quick thing to put together. I love uh, sharing my process and so you guys can see how a piece comes together. Some people are just like, oh, art, art is so, so easy. Or, oh, you just get, sit at a computer for a couple hours and you get something by just waving your magic tablet pen around uh, no 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 it's it's a process and the other thing too is if you want to get into art please jump in practice you will eventually get better if you just keep that up I didn't start out this way and I am still not entirely happy with my skill set yet but I feel like I'm getting better with every piece that I do and when I get a piece like this that I am very very proud of that I can share with you the process of how I went from a literal pure white blank canvas to the final picture wow it is a really really cool feeling so here it is. Here is the final piece. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will be back in another video. Until then, I will see you all next time.